Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to talk about the theorems of Pappus Goldinus. Here's the first theory. The first theory says that the surface area of an object that is formed by rotating a curve about an axis is equal to the length of the curve multiplied by the distance covered by the centroid during the rotation about the axis. Hmm, that's a lot of words, but really what that means is let's say we have a curve, in this case a straight line here at an angle, away from the x-axis. This is the length of that curve, and this is the centroid of the curve, right in the middle of that particular line. If we now take that line and rotate it about the x-axis, we will form kind of a cone that goes outward in one direction and inward towards the other direction. It's a truncated cone, it's a hollow cone, so let's go ahead and, and do that. If we rotate, to rotate this all the way around like this, we get something that looks like that. And this will look like that. And then this will go down in this direction. Maybe a little bit more of a curve here. There it is. That's the object that we end up with. And now we're interested in figuring out what the surface area is of the side of this object. Not, of course, the holes here, but the surface area of the sides. How big is that? Well, first of all, we need to realize that this distance here is the y-coordinate of the center mass of this curve. We now follow the equation here. The surface area of the object formed, the area of the object formed, is equal to the length of the curve, equal to L, multiplied by the distance covered by the centroid during the rotation about the axis. If we take the centroid and we see that it will rotate about the axis, so when it comes to the other side here, it'll be right down here, it'll form a circular path. The distance of that circle path will be 2 pi times the radius of that circle path, and the radius of that circle path, r, is equal to the y-coordinate of the centroid of that curve. Again, we multiply the length of the curve times the path length, 2 pi times the y-coordinate of the centroid. That's pretty straightforward. That's pretty easy. All we have to do is figure out what the length is, figure out what the distance is from the x-axis of the centroid, find that distance, multiply 2 pi times that distance for the, the path that it takes as it goes around the axis, multiply down the curve, and that gives us the surface here. A very powerful theorem. That's the first one of two theorems. On the next video, we'll go and attack the second one. And then we'll do some examples so that makes it crystal clear on how to do that. And in some cases, it makes it really easy to find the surface area of objects that otherwise would take a lot of difficult math. And this is how we do that.